we are going to talk about the mechanism of labor. Now, the mechanism of labor are a series of movements that the fetus has to undergo in order for it to pass through the birth canal. Now, as the fetus descends, it has to undergo several changes in position in order for it to adapt optimally to the changing position of the maternal pelvis. There are several indicators in order for us to have a good mechanism of labor. And one is lie, and the lie is supposed to be that of longitudinal. The other one is attitude. Now, the attitude is supposed to be that of good friction. That is, the back that is bent, and the head is supposed to be flexed with chin on the chest. The thighs are supposed to be flexed as well with legs on the thigh. The other one is presentation, and the presentation is supposed to be that of vertex or cephalic presentation. The denominator is supposed to be that of oxput. And the ox foot is the part that is going to lie on the maternal OS before birth. Position. The position is supposed to be either left occipital anterior or right occipital anterior. So those are some of the indicators of the good or normal mechanism of labor. Now, do we have principles for this mechanism of labor? Of course, yes. Now, the first one is descent. With good uterine contractions, descent is always going to be present. Descent is throughout the normal mechanism of labor. The other one is, whichever part leads and first comes in contact with the pelvic floor muscles must rotate forwards until it comes under the symphysis pubis. So whichever part leads is supposed to meet the, the resistance of the pelvic floor muscles as the fetus is descending, and once that part meets the first, meets with the pelvic floor muscles, it's supposed to rotate forward until it comes under the symphysis pubis. The last one is whatever emerges from the pelvis must pivot around the pubic bone. So, those are some of the principles of the normal mechanism of labor. Actually, we only have three mechanisms, three principles of the normal mechanism of labor. Now, what are these cardinal movements we are talking about when we are dealing with the mechanism of labor? Actually, we have about five movements and five cardinal movements that are undertaken by the fetus as it's undergoing this process of delivery. Now, the first one is engagement. Now, engagement is when the largest diameter of the fetal head fits through the largest diameter of the pelvic brim. So as the fetus engages, it moves in either the left or right occipital transverse so that it can adapt optimally to the largest diameter of the pelvic brim. And this makes it simple for it, and this will result in what we call descent. Now, the fetus will continue descending towards the pelvic floor. Now, descent occurs because of good uterine muscle contractions, pressure of the amniotic fluid, and good abdominal muscle contractions by the mother. The other one is friction. Now, as a fetal head descends, it comes in contact with the pelvic floor muscles, and this allows the fetal head to flex, making it to be the head chin to chest. And this will allow the fetal head, the presenting part of the fetal head, to be suboccipital pragmatic. So this will be the suboccipital pragmatic, as we will see. And this makes it easy for the fetal head to pass through the pelvic, um, the pelvic image, the pelvic cavity. The other one is internal rotation. Now, 
Now, internal rotation, as a result of the resistance of the pelvic floor muscles, and the pelvic floor muscles has got a gutter shape. This is the shape with a forward and downward rotation. And this will allow the fetus to rotate from either the right or left occipital transverse and at a 90 degrees angle medially until it comes under the symphysis pubis or the suprapubic arc. This is the only thing that is going to result in clowning. So internal rotation will result in clowning. And clowning is going to be visible at the vulva. And we say, we term that clowning has taken place when the head no longer recedes between the contractions. So whenever there is a contraction, the head no longer recedes, the head no longer goes back, then we say clowning has taken place. Extension. Now, as clowning has taken place, the fetal head has to extend and it sweeps through the perineum, making it to stretch. This is what we call extension. External rotation. Now, external rotation will occur together with restitution. Because as the head extends, it's supposed to rotate externally in order for it to face either the right or left thigh, middle thigh of the mother. And as the head is doing that, also the shoulders inside are rotating from either the right or left transverse position until they come into an anterior uh, anterior posterior position. So this is what we call this realignment of the shoulders from the left and right uh, transverse position into the anterior posterior position is what we call restitution. It is the realignment of the shoulders as the edge also is rotating externally. Now, delivery of the shoulders and the baby Now, a midwife will apply downward traction in order for him or her to deliver the anterior shoulder. And again, the same traction upward is going to be applied in order for him or her to, to deliver the posterior shoulder until the rest of the baby is delivered. So those are some of the mechanisms of, and the mechanisms of labor, the cardinal movements under the mechanisms of labor. And as a midwife, really, we are supposed to have knowledge about the good mechanism of labor in order for us to avoid complications that may occur as the baby is being born.